Uh, interesting point being made here. Um, fair is there's no evidence that they exist, but equally, where's the evidence uh, that God does exist? I think the disanalogy is the following. We have good evidence that fairies do not exist. The reason people don't believe in Santa Claus is not simply there's a lack of evidence for him. There's good evidence that there is no such person. Uh, by contrast, with respect to God, I think we have both good evidence for the existence of God that I enumerated earlier, but I don't think Michael can present any good argument that there is no God. The atheist here has a burden of proof to sustain his claim that there is no such being as God. And I don't think this is a burden that the atheist can carry. I would like to come back to an earlier point, if Please. I may, too, and that is the notion that atheists are somehow the intelligentsia among us and so forth. I think this is just completely false. The spate of new books published by the new atheists like Harris and Hitchens and Dawkins and so forth are not sophisticated books intellectually. These are, for the most part, angry, uh, bitter diatribes against religion. And while someone like Dawkins may be a good scientist in his field, when he begins to talk about philosophy and theology, he is merely a layman. And The God Delusion is a very unsophisticated book intellectually. As a philosopher, I, I was just appalled at the arguments he gives in that book. Uh, it is an embarrassment, really, I think. Well, I, I can agree, and I, I, I suspect uh, Michael may, may as well. That I think he would, too. It, it, the re, if you look at the reviews, uh, this man is, is respected in his field. Yes. But this book, if you look at the reviews, they're, they're quite damning. I used to work with Chris Hitchens. He's a bright guy. He's a fun guy. This is not a, a profound book. It, it's a fun book in many ways. So mm -hmm. I think most people would agree that the three you mentioned in particular, Dawkins, Harris, and Hitchens, what they've written is not first-class scholarship. However, there are first-class scholars and genuine intellectuals who do certainly. not believe at, at all in Certainly. God. Certainly there are, Michael. But there has also been, especially over the last 50 years, since the late 1960s, a, a literal revolution in my discipline, philosophy, uh, in the Anglo-American world which has brought about a renaissance of Christian philosophy such that some of our finest philosophers at our most prestigious universities are now outspoken Bible-believing okay. Christians. Sir? I'm sorry. Where is this uh, philosophical revolution taking place? I'm In the Anglo-American realm. Um, the ones dominated by uh, assume, assumed atheists like people like Iyer, um, people like Bertrand Russell, uh, who really dominate? Like, well, the, I'm sorry, I just never have what heard was the first this. Thing you said? I think you meant Air. Oh, from AJ yeah. Air. AJ Air. But that's yeah. the, that's a bygone generation, Michael. I'm talking about or today. About, okay, let's talk about people from today, like Quine, right? He's who's, dead too. Well, he died only a couple of years. Like, so did Freddie Air, but I mean, but, I mean <laughs> well, well, no, let's well, talk AJ, about but, let's so name so. names people like Richard Swinburne. Uh, at Oxford University, uh, Robert and Marilyn Adams at Oxford, Brian Leftow at Oxford, uh, people like Alvin Planning at University of Notre Dame, Peter Van Inwagen, uh, Dallas Willard, Eleanor Stump. I mean, I could go on and on naming names at top universities in America and England who are outspoken Christians, such that the face of my discipline compared to the 1930s and 40s, when Russell and Ayer were dominant, has been utterly transformed.